Hey y'all, welcome back to Growing My Green Thumb. It's me, Kristen. I don't know if you guys can see, but my, <laughs> my brassicas here that have a uh, flower, they're full of bees. But I really wanna start getting this bed cleaned up to get prepared for spring planting. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of this cut away and brought to the compost pile, the stuff that died from the freeze um, without getting stung. So let me see if I can get you a little closer. Can y'all see? Look. Look right here. Look at the bees. They're loving these flowers. So obviously these flowers did fine in the freeze. See, there's one there. Check it out. So this was a, um, a mix that I had gotten. It's a stir fry mix that's full of different kinds of brassicas. The bees are just all over this. So I'm gonna see if I can get some of this dead stuff down there and this dead lettuce, <laughs> that's dead. We're gonna get that cut away. And my celery back there, that celery is doing good. I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna um, just get rid of some of that dead stuff there. This is another dead lettuce. Right there, I'm gonna clip that away. I have some kale that are surviving. I'm gonna keep those. And then I have my beautiful little cabbages here. I'm just gonna clip away the dead leaves or the old leaves that aren't looking so good. So let's see if I can get you a good angle. Look at that bee. Let's see if I can get you a good angle and hope I don't get stung. All right, hang on. so I think this angle will work. This here is one of my lettuces that I had. This died in the, the freeze and I would be able to tell you what kind it was except for my tag <laughs> faded because I used that permanent marker but I got my new marker so hopefully my next one will, be, <laughs> will work. So I'm going to cut this one away. I'm just cutting it right at the soil level. I'm not going to dig up the roots the roots will decompose in place and that'll be really good for the soil life. This is the same type of lettuce. This was some, a romaine type lettuce and it's, it's dead too. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Here, this one actually looks like it still has some signs of life. I'm just gonna peel away some of the, the leaves that are looking kind of rough. Some of these on the inside are looking really good, so I actually might be able to harvest, um, make one more harvest off of this one before this one gets um, starts to really bolt from, from the heat. These are two pieces of the celery. You can see the celery. This is actually one I didn't grow this one from seed. This is one that I, uh, I just cut the bottom off at the grocery store and I stuck it down in the soil and it's doing great. Now it's not making like really thick ribs like you would um, buy at the store, but they are very, very tasty and the leaves are good too in a salad. So hey, it's free food. So try it out, see if it works for you. This is a Siamese Dragon stir fry mix. This tag didn't fade. What I did with this one was I turned it so that the writing was facing the inside of this board so the sun didn't really hit it. But this is a Siamese Dragon stir fry mix. I got this one from Baker Creek. It was some bok choy, some different kinds of kale, uh, and some other different kinds that I'm really not sure what it was. It was just a mix of different brassicas. I'm gonna speed, I'm gonna, uh, speed this up for a little bit because it's gonna be more of the same, me dodging bees and uh, just cleaning out some old dead leaves. So I'll bring you back when most of this is done. So 
So y'all, I wanted to show you this one. I ended up pulling this one because it was really mushy here at the stem where um, where the stem was reaching the ground. But I pulled this one. I wanted to show you. Check out this root. I had no idea that brassicas made like a big old tap root like this. Isn't that cool? I don't know if anybody's ever tried to eat a brassica tap root. I don't know if it's edible, but those kind of things always cross my mind whenever I see something that looks like a carrot. <laughs> All right, let me get back to it. Okay, y'all, I got this one more or less cleaned up. Look at how beautifully the cabbages did. These are early Jersey Wakefield cabbages. They're still doing really beautiful. They haven't made a head yet. And really it's starting to get warm. It's gonna be 81 today um, in the afternoon. So I don't know if I'm gonna get a head off of these, but they're really, really pretty. Those, <laughs> it looks like those little green roses really. So I'm gonna keep them in the garden until it's time for me to really get my plants in for the spring. I wanted to show y'all this. I bought this one because it's supposed to be a spinach type substitute and uh, so this is New Zealand spinach. I put these seeds in the ground here on October 4th. This is what they look like after the freeze. They uh, had a lot of damage. I pulled that away but you can see some new growth coming in here and here. So these were not covered during the 16 degree freeze that we had. So you can see that these, um, they'll, they'll survive. I didn't really care for the taste of them that much. I did taste them earlier and um, they do taste kind of grassy. It's not one of the best tasting spinach substitutes I've ever tried. But nonetheless, it's good to have a variety of plants to try and eat. And this here, I'm, I'm disappointed here. This was looking really good before the freeze, but it froze. This was lovage. Now it might come back though, cause it is perennial and it does come back in other areas where they get freezes. So I'm going to leave this spot right here undisturbed and hope that it comes back from its roots. Here I got this bed pretty much cleaned out. I'm leaving all of these flowers for the bees right now. I'll get this little area cleaned out some more um, once I start getting some other things flowering. I'm leaving these kales because this is one of my favorite type of kale, even though some of these uh, leaves are damaged. I'm leaving these because I love this type of kale. It's Ragged Jack kale right there. And I do have a couple other brassicas. This looks like a tot soy, and this one's flowering. I'm going to leave that one. I'm sure that one will make some yellow flower similar to these other uh, mustard green types. This is a bok choy right here that's flowered right there. All the brassicas make flowers that look like that. And all of my bok choy have flowered. Oh look, say hi to the bee. This is why we're leaving them, y'all. Let me see if I can get a picture of that. Aww. I hope I got an awesome picture of that. Let's see if I can get it with the, um, that in the, with the. Okay, I think I got a picture of that, yay. So here we have some more. This is another, um, let's see, that was in that Siamese dragon mix. So I'm not sure exactly what type of brassica that is. That might be some type of kale or mustard. I'm really not sure, but I'm gonna let that grow because it looks really good and it's not starting to bolt yet. So I might be able to harvest another set of uh, greens for stir fry off of this one. And look at my celery back there. It did great with the freeze. And my lone, <laughs> that's my lone romaine lettuce that survived right here out of like five or six. Oh, let me show you one more thing. I did get the rest of this bed cleared out. So this tomato that was right here, it's gone. It's a goner. So let me pan all the way over here. This one here, look, I'm gonna leave this one and let it grow. I'm just gonna encourage it to go right on over. It's gonna grow over and I'm gonna let this one vine. I won't trellis this one. I have this bed right here all cleared out, ready to put in some cucumbers. Very excited about that. And let me show you on the other side of my cattle panel trellis here. Here's my trellis. Here we go. This is where some more cucumbers or other climbing squashes or something like that. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna put here. Let's have a look at here. I haven't cleaned out this bed, 
but this is my tomatoes that actually had a little bit of fruit on them with the freeze. I need to clean out this bed, the purple orac. And, but look at this. This tomato is growing. I'm so excited. Look at that. And let's just see. Look at our plants hardening off. Doesn't that make you excited? Sure does make me excited. They look so pretty. There's, I can tell these peppers, watch, watch what I get to the peppers. Look y'all, they started to grow already just from being outside. They just really needed some good sunlight. There's the onions and there's some more cucumbers. Check out that bloody dock. That one is so beautiful. So, okay. I just finished cleaning out this lettuce bed here and I wanna show you what survived the winter and uh, give you a little glimpse of how things are looking after the 16 degree weather we had like two weeks ago. So this one here is the bronze arrowhead. This one looks um, pretty similar in color. I'll pan over here to this bronze mignonette. The coloration this is, is very similar. I think it's just the shape of the leaves that's different. Over here, I have this, I don't know, Baladi <laughs> Aswan lettuce. It's pretty much just like your typical romaine lettuce. And this one was really, really pretty. This is the Freckles Romaine Lettuce. This one did really well with the freeze and you can see this one has come back much quicker even than the other ones. Mm -hmm. And then I have this other one way back here. This one is really pretty too. It's the Devil's Ear Lettuce. That's one of the other bronzy colored ones that I have. So this is my lettuce bed. This is what survived the winter. I already pulled all of my bok choy out because they were looking kind of sad and they never really made any good heads of bok choy before it started bolting. So this is what's left in my lettuce bed. I'm gonna let this grow some more going into the spring until these start bolting. And if you don't know, bolting means uh, go to seed. So once they send up their flower spikes and go to seed, I might need this space to grow some other, uh, some other plants. Make sure to subscribe, hit, hit the notification bell. Oh, and also leave a like. That way you can see our newest videos. Yeah. We're here looking at my daikon radish. Most of these have survived the 16 degree weather, but they're sending up their shoots their flowering stalks and so once they do that they're going to start taking energy away from their roots so let's pull all of these and let's see what we have what, what kind of harvest we have <laughs> i lost a tooth in my mouth and my mouth looks terrible so that one's <laughs> that one's just a little one but i know we have a bigger one here let's pull this one oh, oh man yeah. oh my god <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Don't make me taste this one. Look at that. That's definitely eatable. Edible, right? Edible. Eatable, edible, whatever they want you to call it. Pull this one. Oh wow, another big one. Yay! Yeah, that one's, a, that one's as fat as a pig. <laughs> oh, another skinny one. Nope. You know Don't what, that I'm one wondering. Grow. These are going fat, skinny, fat, skinny. I'm wondering if I had them planted too close. Next year, I'll have to try planting them not so close together. That one has a long Most of them are really skinny. Yeah, some of them are really skinny. I already pulled the biggest two, so that could be part of it too. All right, this is our last daikon radish. Mm, I'm All right. not I'm gonna cut off all the tops and we'll show you all the roots. So this is our radish harvest. <laughs> Let me see if I can get closer. Oh no, I'm dropping one. So this is our daikon radish harvest. Look at that. So that's what we got. I'm gonna separate, I'm gonna spread them out farther next year so that they're not, uh, not growing fat, skinny, fat, skinny, fat, skinny. <laughs>
Okay, so thanks for joining us with our radish harvest. <laughs> this was one of our little harvests. We're gonna continue cleaning out the rest of these beds. <laughs> so let me show you what was supposed to be planted in this bed here. And we'll talk about what didn't work. <laughs> so this garden bed here did not do well. Barely any seeds that I put in here at all survived. So let me show you what all I planted and what is not here. So these tags here, I had them facing in like this so they didn't get the sunlight on them. So that worked out better. So you see I planted Chioga beet on October 21st. It's the end of February now and this is my beet. That's it. That's what I got. One. <laughs> I know, right? I might have one tiny little plant there. We'll see. I have that. We'll see. I don't know if that's the beet or, or not, but there it is. We're going to let it grow. Sorry, I'm making y'all sick. I know. I don't have a, a stabilizer on here. And let's see what else was supposed to be in here. Golden beet. Okay, I'll show you my golden beet row. There's my golden beet row and there's my golden beet. That's it. That's what I have after the freeze. And nothing was really growing before the freeze either. So beets did terribly for me. Also carrots did terribly for me. This was <laughs> this was Scarlet Nantes carrot. And the next row was supposed to be um, this Tonda, Tonada Parigi carrot. You see these were planted in October. These were seeded in October. And I have two little carrots here. See that? Look at how little that is. That's it. So I'm gonna let these grow some more cause that's all I got. Let's see what I got over here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And one more tiny, tiny carrot that doesn't even have a root yet. And this tiny little thing right here, that's a golden purslane. I planted a golden purslane in here and it seeded itself. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. So I'm gonna let that grow right there. Ah, and it's so, it's so tiny, look how tiny it is. So this is what's left after the freeze in this part of the bed. I can't blame it on the freeze though. This bed wasn't doing well before the freeze. This was, part, this was um, supposed to be lettuces here. Let me show you what it was supposed to be and what didn't grow. This was supposed to be all season romaine. It was supposed to be a 70 day lettuce that I could harvest at the end of December. And I got nothing, nothing from there at all. And butter crunch. This packet of seeds though, I think this was a dud because not one germinated at all from this butter crunch. Uh, so that was another fail. <laughs> Uh, let's see. These are some mustards. They're flowering. I'm gonna pull these since I have uh, those way over there. I have all of those flowering. So I'm gonna pull these and get this bed ready Look for the spring. Got some big leaves. <laughs> and then back over here. Let's see. This is some spinach. This is some spinach here. And oh it's flowering so oh no that might be oh that, <laughs> that was a fake out that wasn't the, the spinach flowering this is this um this mustard over here so this is spinach and y'all my, my cherry bell radishes they're doing terribly as well i had very 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 little luck with cherry bell radishes so this is my spinach that's hiding under here so i'm gonna get all of this cleaned up i'm gonna pull the radishes because they just never really did anything and I'm gonna keep these couple of little spinaches that are doing okay, and hopefully I'll get some in the spring. Now I'm here in my second tomato bed, and I'm gonna start clipping away some of this um, stuff that looks uh, not too fresh, and uh, see if this tomato will hang on and give me some fruit now that it's almost springtime. So let's see, as I look here, this leader right here, this one looks pretty good, this one looks kinda sad. So you can see the bifurc you can see the bifurcation right here. I hope you can see it. Um, so since I want to keep this one, I'm going to get rid of this whole piece right here. So I'm going to cut this one right here. And 
then on this piece here, this looks sad, this looks sad, and this one looks sad. So I'm going to encourage this one to grow up through here. So I'm going to snip these away. Now we have one leading branch here. This bifurcation here, this looks pretty good. So I'm just going to trim away some of, uh, some of this right here. I'm going to let that grow. Again, this one I'm going to do the same, just trim away this dead stuff. Since this tomato has been in this bed since the fall, it has a lot of leaders on it. I didn't train this one to be single stem and get rid of all the suckers. So I'm just going to continue going through and cutting off anything that looks dead and trying to choose one of the best paths. I have some dead um, leaders and some dead branches here. So I'm going to um, snip away some of this dead part of the vine and then we'll see where we're looking. We'll see how we're looking after that. Just snipping away all of this dead part right now. Okay, so look here. I was surprised. This is actually one plant. You can see here, I had buried the stem and so this all rooted and bury that back and it made, you know, two different stalks here. So there's this one and there's this one and this one here actually there's a nice little bush part here and then it has this really really long one here that you just saw me trimming up there and there so this is all one plant so when i get this one up on the trellis you'll see how i'm going to do that but that's just one tomato plant so okay, we have one really nice plant. Let's keep moving down this bed and see how many we, else we have left. Okay, so you can see this one here. This one has a pretty nice um, amount of leaves there, but it has a really, really, really long stem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bury this stem and I'm gonna put the plant right here. So when I put the, the poles here for trellising, I'll be able to just let this grow right on up that way. And all of this here will be buried. You can see here it's already putting out some little leaves. I'm just gonna quickly, quickly pick those off and I'm gonna bury all of this part here. This plant here, that one's a goner. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip that one. Okay. And then this one, this one is interesting. It's got a lot going on. Um, so right here, you might be able to see there's a lot of damage right here. I'm gonna cut this off right here. So all of this piece is gonna go but this right here looks like it has potential. So I'm gonna snip away this dead stuff. Snip this away. But y'all, these plants are really resilient. I was seeing a lot of dead on it but if you can look it's starting to send out little suckers so it's trying to survive so i'm gonna let it continue i'll put this this way so it can grow this way because my trellis poles are going to go this way and as i see little weeds most of the little weeds i'm going to pull out however i want to show you this i'm going to let this grow let me get you closer you can see here this, this little heart-shaped leaf here, it's kind of hard to see the heart shape. Let me get you in the middle. This is a violet, a, a wild violet, and I actually bought some seeds of this to get this growing in the garden because I love the little purple flowers that it shoots up. And y'all, if y'all have never, if you have never tasted violet leaves, these are so much better than spinach. They're just, they're just really, really tasty. The flowers are edible too, and they're really sweet. So I love adding some violet leaves into my salad and violet flowers. So I'm definitely gonna leave this in the potager garden. And look, we have one more tomato over here to get this one cleaned up. 
So that'll be a total of four tomatoes in this bed that survived the winter. One, two, three, and four. So let's get that one cleaned up. Okay, let's see what we're working with in here. Um, stick. I'm just gonna start by cutting away this dead stuff. This whole little piece here looks dead. Snip that away. And this one, this one here, this one, this one. Um, I have a lot of dead on this one. Um, okay, so some of this leaf damage um, was from the cold. And I might have just killed it. You heard that little snap? I just twisted this vine here. Okay, well, since I damaged this right here by handling it, uh, this one's just going to have to be forfeited. So I'm going to snip this one away, even though it had some flowers there. Oh, well. Tell this one bye. So three <laughs> tomatoes left in this bed that survived the winter in my cleanup. <laughs> Let me show you guys what I found when I was cleaning out this tomato bed. Sorry, I had my finger in there. Look at him. Yep. He's one of the guys that eats your vegetables. He especially loves brassicas, but he again, he's not too picky. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna get removed and placed somewhere else. And let me show you over here. This tomato wants to survive. Look at that. It's sending up a little a little sprout, a little shoot from the base there. How cool is that? Okay, so I got this last tomato bed cleared out. Let me just give you a glance. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> this one is massive. It wants to survive. That one's six. And then I know these three are definitely Creole. So this is one here. So I make seven, eight, and nine. So nine tomatoes survived our winter, including our 16 degree weather. Can you guys believe it? Awesome. Look at those tomatoes. All right, I'm gonna let y'all go. I've been working all day and I need to get that uh, elephant ear up before it thinks it's gonna be growing in the tomato bed. So let me flip you around. Whew. So we did a lot, a lot of work today. So thanks for joining and I hope this was fun for you. It was fun for me. And I hope you maybe learned something or laughed at my fails or you know, whatever. <laughs> so thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video.